Hey y'all, welcome to Veggie Farming. I'm Stacy, and last year I added this raised bed to my garden and the first plantings out of this new raised bed were terrible. I'll insert a picture and show you how this bed looked at the same time last year. So I've spent the last couple seasons trying to figure out how to increase production in this bed and also work on soil health. I think I'm headed in the right direction, so I'm gonna share with you seven things I've done to help increase the production in my raised beds. And I'm also gonna add some things I've done specifically with the tomatoes to help them grow this year as well. So let's get started. By the time I pulled that first set of plants out, it was the middle of summertime in zone 8A North Texas, and we had several days above 100 degrees. So I knew I didn't wanna leave the soil just bare to completely dry out. So I added a cover crop of cow peas, pink eye purple hull peas, and I covered the bed with it. So they protected the soil and added some nitrogen back that I would need for my next crop of leafy greens. Another thing I did after I pulled out that old summer crop is I watered in the bed with compost tea or super juice like Miss Linda calls it. And I added all kind of beneficial bacteria back into this soil before planting the cover crop. So I've made it a practice to use compost teas on a regular basis now. So once all of my fall crops were doing great and all the leaves had fallen from the trees around, I vacuumed up all of the fall leaves, shredded them in my vacuum shredder and covered all of the beds with shredded leaves to protect the soil through the fall and winter. I also started composting in place in my raised beds. In a previous video, I showed you how I planted a valve box cover and started adding kitchen scraps into those to compost. Next, I had to concentrate on keeping moisture in the soil. So the first thing I added was a DIY Oya. And so I planted those and buried those deep into the soil as well to add moisture right into the roots of the plants. Next, I decided to change my mulch. Previously, I was mulching with straw and I didn't have a problem with it through the cooler months, but in the summer, it just wasn't keeping enough moisture in the soil. So I changed over to a wood mulch. I found that that traps more moisture in my soil and my soil doesn't get as dry. And before I added my spring and summer plants, I added a fresh layer of compost and vermiculite as well to help keep more moisture in the soil. So overall, I found that all of these changes have added up to better production this season. Let's talk about tomatoes. Last year, I had a problem with rodents getting in and eating my plants. So I made cages out of hardware cloth and they seemed to work out well. They even worked well as a trellis to hold the plants in place. What I did was prune all of the bottom leaves off to help with airflow, but I left the upper leaves as a canopy to kind of help protect the soil as well. Let's go around to the back of the bed and take a better look at some of the plants I'm growing. It's nearing the end of the season and temps have been over 100 degrees for several days, so they're starting to look a little rough. But this plant here is the Berry's Crazy Cherry Tomato, and this was one of my favorites this season. It's one of the most prolific little cherry tomatoes I've ever grown. And they taste really good, a mild flavor, not too acidic, kind of fruity. So I highly recommend this tomato. And this was one of the ones that I didn't put a cage over, so it took a little bit more damage than some of the others from wind. And right over here next to it is the Ananas Noir Tomato, which actually means black pineapple. And it gave me some of the largest tomatoes that I got this season. And the flavor was really good, so I'm adding it to my list of tomatoes that I'm gonna continue to grow. And this is another one of my Ananas Noir plants has quite a few tomatoes on it. I did get quite a few tomatoes from this one this season, so it does have good production on it as well. I did get some worm damage to some of them and some bird damage. So 
it gave enough tomatoes that I still was able to get some in the house, even with all of the pest damage. So let me show you how I get into these cages. They're closed at the top and bottom and in the middle. At the top and the bottom, they're closed with zip ties and in the middle, I've used some twisted tomato wire so that when I wanna get into the cage, all I have to do is untwist the tomato wire and then I can pull it apart and stick my hand in and get in any leaves or put in any fertilizer. The only thing I have to be careful of is that sometimes where the wires cross can be kind of sharp. So I normally have to wear gloves when I'm getting into the cages, but other than that, they're working out really well. This next tomato is the Paul Robeson tomato, and it did pretty well for me also. I was finally able to taste one that was ripe and it had a really good flavor, so I'm adding this one to my list of tomatoes to grow again also. This mushroom basket tomato is one of the ones that didn't do well for me this year. It ended up with blossom end rot on a lot of the tomatoes and it took a lot of damage in the wind so I ended up cutting off a lot of the branches and so the leaves started dying back and then after that I don't feel like the plant matured as it should. So this one was not one of my favorite this year. I don't even think I'll try to grow it again. Over on this side, we have a bumblebee tomato, and that was a pretty prolific plant as well. I made it a point to grow more cherry tomatoes this year, so I had quite a few of those. I have another Berry's Crazy Cherry Tomato over here, and I eventually found some eight foot stakes, and those are gonna be what I use next year, and hopefully those will hold up the plants a little better than these shorter stakes. This last one over here is the black strawberry tomato and it produced a lot of tasty little tomatoes and it's another one that I'm adding to my list to grow again. So this is the last of the tomato plants I have. These were starts from the big box store so I'm not exactly sure what the names are. I lost the tags but these are indeterminate tomatoes. I did also get some starts for some determinate tomatoes from the big box store but they were eaten by the rodents, so they didn't make it. But these are doing pretty well. And this is how my pepper beds are looking now. Over to the right, you can see that volunteer sunflower that just got huge over there. I went ahead and put my shade cloth up. This area is in full sun, and during the day, these plants were starting to look really bad. So I knew it was time to put the shade cloth up. You can see there's quite a few peppers in there ready to harvest. And I planted this bed first so you can see that this one has a lot more peppers on it. The peppers in the next bed over here are just really starting to form. I see lots of flowers and there's a few to harvest over here as well. But the plants are looking nice and healthy. So I'm going to go ahead and get this harvest done and I'll show you what I have.
this is one of my most recent harvests, all washed up and ready to store, and a few that I'm still waiting to ripen. So in the comments, let me know what tips you use to get your best garden ever. Thanks for watching. Happy growing.